Hello, welcome back to the Supercoach Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Savage, the coach of the Savage Burbos. We're here for the Monday wrap this week for round four. I'm joined by Kiss My Behinds, Jake. How are you, Jake? Yeah, good, mate. Um, I guess it's a different Sunday wrap week. We're here on Monday, so uh, I guess the, the last game's just finished. So I'm looking forward to, to going through the games and uh, giving our little Supercoach input. Usually, Mikey is here hosting this thing. A uh, bit of rift in the camp, in, in the chat going on. A uh, bit of controversy over the bold predictions. Um, Mikey nailed three out of three for his bold predictions this week. And uh, Tim went exactly the opposite of him. So, he is none from three. So, bit of bit of bad blood there. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're passionate about it. I'll give them that. I couldn't really give two rats about uh, my ones. I think I've... I think got none, none from three this week. So they might put me at last, I think, now that Mikey's might have jumped ahead of me. So that's all right. I'll cop whatever punishment uh, is happening at the end of the season. Yeah, well, I'm zero from three this week. I was I started the season so hot, but I've I've, I've just shit the bed the last two weeks. And my super coach shot as well. I ended up on 1,045. What did you end up on, Jake? 1,053. So it was only eight points better. But uh, I don't think it's that bad. I think we might be around par. Maybe not for you, who's a lot higher ranked than the rest of us. But I think for myself, it's probably around par. Yeah, for for the average super coach who has started quite uh, softly, a, a lot of podcasters I know have started quite slow. So I think uh, a score like that will see you get some green arrows. With someone like myself ranked in the top thousand, I think I will have a slight drop. Hopefully, I stay within the top ten k, but. It doesn't really matter at this point in the season because uh, if, you, if you're in the top 10K, you're only like, you know, 100 or 200 points out of the top 1K, not far off anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're so close together, I guess. One one massive round and you're jumping heaps of spots up. And mm. I think as long as you're going all right and you're happy with how your team's sort of setting up and how it's progressing, uh, I think that's, that's what really matters. So as long as you're setting your team up to to fly through the middle and the end, then that's the way. Uh, early thoughts, tr- uh, early trade thoughts um, that are on your mind at the moment. Uh, obviously, we- we've still got to go through the wrap-up, but j- just off the top of the head, what are your early trade thoughts? Well, there's kind of a lot of plays that I feel need to go. Um, I think a lot of people are going in the same boat. They've got a lot of bat rowers that are just not doing it. Um, Firma, he's been poo. Satili, although he did score a try, not getting the minutes. Um, Smithies looks like he might have hit his cap. Uh, so all these guys are kind of going to have to go, but we need money to, to sort of make it there. So obviously we're going to have Blaze Tulangi um, as a cheapie. So I think he's going to be the one that's probably most brought in. Um, and then I guess hopefully you've, I find enough money to, to sort of upgrade one of my plotting second rowers. There are a couple of cheapies on the horizon this week. Like um, I, I think even Xavier Willison, is going to be a nice little downgrade option, uh, especially if you have a plotter in that front row spot. Uh, but let's kick it off with the Penrith versus the Roosters game. Uh, this was, it, it's kind of like um, Parramatta with Mitch Moses out. Clint Gutson always stands up uh, with Nathan Cleary out. It's Dylan Edwards. Uh, he just controlled the show. He was goal kicking, kicking goals from everywhere. And he just, the attack he has in him, we probably don't realise from week to week, but uh, 120 points. I know. It's kind of just the Panthers. I know we're talking about it when they're playing. It's just like, it doesn't matter who steps down. We thought, oh, Cleary is definitely going to be a hit for him. Everyone else just steps up around him and just, just does their job. Like, Snyder came in, played well, um, and they just did a job on the Roosters. Like, that, that score flattered the Roosters. The Panthers just, like, yeah. actually did a job on them. And we kind of said it in the chat as well. It looks like Penrith are doing a, a four P to be honest. Like <laughs> yeah. everyone else just looks garbage compared to them. So hopefully for our sake, one of our teams gets there. But the way Penrith are going, Mikey could be another happy, smug little at the end of the season. Oh, I don't mind if Penrith go four in a row because uh, obviously we live in the area, so it's it's kind of nice for us. Um, yeah, it's kind of our second team. Yeah, exactly. Sania Taruva, one hundred thirteen points. Ever since he's gone to that right wing spot, he has picked up. Pretty much all the attacking stats Brian Toto was got, and it's gone vice versa for Brian Toto. I actually do like the move uh, from an NRL standpoint because I think Taruva 
gets a lot more clean ball on that right wing, whereas the left wing, Brian Toto, is a better finisher. So I feel like they need a better fi- finisher on that left side. It does stunt Toto's super coach output, but it makes Taruva a potential someone to look at. Yeah, definitely. He's uh, like that's a couple of games in a row where he's scoring tries and scoring well. And I guess over the left side, Taylor May another poor score, um, and and Toto another poor score as well. So I guess to, for Toto's sake, he's I guess price is going to come down and might be a juicier pickup in, in a couple of rounds. But yeah, I mean Taruby, he looks good. It's the same as Tungo. I know his score wasn't that good, but um, the first uh, you know, first three rounds he was a beat on fire. I'm pretty sure. Tago had a oh, – Tungo had a disallowed try as well. Looked like he – oh, he nearly got over. I, feel, I, actually, I actually forget. I watched the whole game, but it feels like so long ago, Thursday night and we're at Monday night now. Um, yeah, 47 points. I think he's going to be a premium option, especially when Cleary's back. Uh, at the moment, I can't touch him with his price going up and Cleary not there. But I think we will look at him later in the season when uh, his price comes down and it's the back end of the season. Uh, but Liam Henry looks like a pretty good playable option, making cash for us. So pretty happy with that. You could probably run with him as your front row forward number two uh, while James Fish-Harris is out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's beaten a lot of front row ones at the moment. Yeah. Um, the way the front row's going, if you can get anyone over 50, you're cheering. And that's back-to-back for Henry. So yeah, for everyone who has him, uh, it definitely looks a play. Uh, another one, just quickly, Isaiah Yo, 72 points. Uh, he looks like a premium second row option this year. I mean, not just this year. Kind of every year, he just plods along, plays 80 minutes, gets 16 tackles, um, and, you know, throws in a couple of attacking stats in there as well. Seems like the safest guy in terms of the second row. Yeah, for sure. He won't get that many attacking stats, but at the same time, he gets them consistently. Like, he'll get one here and there, and I think that's good to have in the second row spot, especially with players like Fafida not quite um, being an option just yet. Uh, on the other side of the park, Terrell May just pumps it out for us. With with uh, Lindsay Collins out with injury, I think I don't really have to talk about him. He's already 40% owned, but if you don't have him, just, just grab him. Yeah, 100% agree. I mean, he's the best front rower at the moment. Uh, he's, you know giving us all pain Haas vibes. So, yeah, if you haven't got him, I don't think it's too late. His price is going to skyrocket in the 600 pluses. So definitely, uh, definitely be getting him. He's absolutely killing it. Uh, in the next two weeks, the Roosters have the Bulldogs and the Knights. So their, their draw is looking quite nice. So I think someone like Manu and Tedesco are going to be cons- uh, serious options. Uh, Manu with a 63 against Penrith. I think that's a good score to have against Penrith. And then, uh, Teddy down dated from 67 to 47, but will make a significant amount of cash, uh, goes up way above 800 K. So you will have to spend a bit of money on him. Do you think it's worth it for someone like Teddy and also someone like Manu? Uh, Manu, definitely. I'm, I'm really considering him this week. If I don't go say a second rower, um, I'm looking at Manu as a center wing. Like you said, some good fixtures got what 22 points in tackle bus, which is kind of just a given for him every week. The fact he's kind of, Roaming as well, getting involved. I'm very keen on um, Manu. What about Teddy? Savs, would you go back to him? I know you've been doing a bit of fullback roulette and it's kind of mucked you all up a little bit. Well, but, uh, uh, one of my fullbacks, either Trebojevic or Latrell, is going to go to someone like Teddy or Drinkwater or Ponga. Um, just depends Ponga. on which one. Uh, I'll weigh up the options and see who's more of a longer-term play. Um, but, man... The fact that Trebojevic has only gone 55 and 86 in the last two weeks, that was a bad trade, wasn't it? Like, if I held on to Teddy, he would have gained over 150K for me. Uh, I probably would have had better captain options over the last two weeks because I wouldn't have wouldn't have captained Teddy this week. Uh, and I would have captained Cleary last week. So, it, it was a bad trade. So, th- this fullback roulette situation, it, it, it's not always going to benefit you. Um especially in my case. Uh, but I think if I just keep going going with it, it's going to be a, a good thing for me. So, yeah, definitely looking at someone like Ponga or Teddy next week. I probably won't go drink water because I've got enough Cowboys in my side at the moment. But, um, yeah, definitely the way Teddy's looking and with that draw coming up, I, I like what he's doing. Yeah, 
I mean, yeah, you, you kind of mentioned it with, with the fullbacks. It didn't work this time. Doesn't mean it's not going to work the next time. I think. Yeah. It's just some people are going to get lucky. Some people are going to get unlucky. And I mean, everyone thought Turbo was going to go ballistic this week, and he was. I wouldn't say he was poor, but they just mainly just didn't get him involved. They're like, it was almost a plan of to keep it away from Turbo. Yeah, it's it's a bit interesting how Turbo's been used this year. Maybe we've got to look at him at it at a different light because. Uh, Luke Brooks, I guess we'll talk about him with Manly, but uh, it looks like yeah, Luke we'll Brooks get is getting more involved and he's just not getting that every single ball that he wants. So uh, Dom Young, 30 points with a break even of negative 15. So we'll only make probably less than 40K, goes up to 680K. I still think he's a good buy next week because uh, I think with that draw, he's that, that wing's going to be beneficiary. Yeah, and even, I guess, the I mean, I would put all the backs for the Roosters in there. Dom Young, Manu, I know Sawali was a bit ordinary, but taking stats will come for him, even Dan Tupo. I think uh, Roosters backs are going to be one to target for the next couple of rounds. Uh, one, I think, is a good target option is Sam Walker. at He's 564K. He had a break-even of 95. He will lose 45K with a with a score of 42. Um Obviously, plays the Bulldogs and the uh, Knights over the next two weeks. So, I think a downgrade from Cleary option banks you about 350k there. So, you don't have to get in these cheapies. You can fix the the holes in your side. I actually don't mind this option going down Sam Walker. Well, me and Mikey actually have him. So, I mean, we've kind of been disappointed the last couple mm. of rounds. I was unlucky against Penner if you don't expect him to go well. The round before, he scored two tries and then came off with a... HIA, so, but I, I don't mind it. I clearly on it. Like he said on the uh, Sunday footy show or whatever that they do on Channel Nine. Uh, he was on it yesterday, um, and he was kind of saying that they're most likely just going to rest him next week. Then they got the buy, and then he come back the the, the uh, week after. They don't want to kind of move into what they they kind of had last year, where he had the niggle, kept playing, then actually did his hamstring. So I think they're going to take it light. I mean, Penner still flogging team, so there's no point rushing yeah. him back. Um, and like you said, if you free out three hundred k, that's an upgrade of say, I don't know, Salmon Hutchinson, one of these plotters up to, to a six hundred six fifty k player, which I think is pretty good. I think it's a good option at this point in the season, uh, especially. I think we're getting to the point now where we're making enough cash to put out these fires and really replace them with good enough players to get us going for, uh, for this point of the year. Um, moving on to the next game, Rabbitohs versus Bulldogs. Latrell Mitchell, 69 points. Not quite what I expected against the Bulldogs. Uh, they have a draw of the Warriors, the Sharks, Melbourne and Penrith. Do you think Latrell is going to be a victim of fullback roulette and potentially should go out? I mean, possibly. I mean, it's not the worst draw as well. And it kind of doesn't really matter for Latrell who he's playing. I think the fact that Souths are kind of being a bit ordinary um, is a reason to get rid of him. Mm. Um, they kind of haven't really clicked yet. They only just beat the Bulldogs, who I thought were quite poor. I think the Bulldogs could have even won this game um, if their halves play was a bit better. Um, but I guess you, you, a lot of people are kind of doing that roulette thing, chasing matchups, and I think other play, other fullbacks have better matchups than what Latrell has. So it would make sense for him to be a victim of the roulette, as you said. I'm in a bit of an awkward spot at the moment where it's Latrell or Turbo going out for me next week. And Turbo's draw is the is Penrith next week and then the Warriors. Um, I feel like Latrell against a trickier draw can do better than Turbo. So I'm a bit... I don't know what to do, but then Turbo has the Titans and a really good draw following that. So it's a bit of an awkward one because I'm like, if I trade Turbo out, I'm going to want him back in two weeks anyway. So it's it's a real tricky one and I'll probably got to weigh up and have a look at how things are going to play out and whether I can do that or not. Um, Jack White and 103 points look good on that left edge. Uh, with that draw, it's a bit tricky, but uh, 529k on the left edge for the Rabbitohs. Alex Johnston is out as well, so it looks like he'll probably get a little bit more quality ball, Jack Whiten. Is he a super coach option? I, did, I mean, of all the South backs, now that Johnston's down, he, he probably is the only um, super coach option there. Um, Souths always do go left, so I mean, it, he played well. He got a lot of decent attacking ball, so 
there's definitely an argument for him. He's not an expensive player either. Um, and valuable at centre wing where yeah, everyone's kind of up and down. I, I, I mean, I don't I don't mind Jack White as an option. Uh, if Souths were playing a lot better, um, I definitely think it's a better option than than most. But I don't know. I mean, I don't I don't hate it. Put it that way. Cam Murray with seventy eight points with the try assist. You think he's an option? Uh, I mean, potentially. I don't know. I mean, he's kind of always an option in your super coach size. It's kind of just what one you like better. We've got a couple of back rowers that, or like expensive back rowers that are probably have more of an attacking upside. You've got like Ola Kawatu, Eli Katoa, who are all kind of at that same price um, that maybe you'd prefer to go to. But he's definitely in the mix. There's, there's quite a few of them um, that if we're, you know, jumping off these plotter second rowers, he's, he's shown it before he's a gun. Here's a gun. Uh, on the other side of the park, I don't love much here. Anything you want to touch on? Well, I thought Max King was good. Um, another front rower. I think he's mid-500s. Um, another one that can kind of pick in. But I think in terms of the Bulldogs, I think Salmon's got to go. I think you got to get rid of him. Um, Drew Hutchinson, although he's got a 50, there's a good chance he doesn't even get picked by the Bulldogs next week because... He was quite ordinary, um, definitely stuffed their attack. But other than that, like another one, Karaz, he was poor. But I think you can just put that one that one aside. We saw the Brown uh, a week before where he scored 100 with only, what, one try that the big scores will come. So I don't don't see panicking on, on Karaz. Hacho got 49 points with a break-even of 13. So uh, with the 64 on his average from last week, uh, should make a bit of money and have a lowish break even next week. So going above 400K and having that flexibility for people to go Cleary to Valentine Holmes or the Hammer or something like that, I think that's pretty invaluable. Um, maybe he's an option to hold on to till, till, till Cleary's back, but it also depends on the makeup of your side. If if you need to get him out and he's in centre wing, uh, I think, yeah, probably in centre wing. He's a sell, but in half back, he might not be. Yeah, yeah, I kind of agree. What What about um Pele two point in Sam Hughes? You see, uh, oh Jesus oh Christ! God. Um, it it's disappointing because he actually looks pretty good when he does come on, but he's not getting the minutes. He's obviously a bit young, uh, a bit young in NRL, and they're trying to ease him in. They're doing the right thing, but super coach wise, it's not going to translate. If you could like do a Sam Hughes to Xavier Willison, is that something you'd be interested in doing? I mean, Willison's a bit unknown as well. I guess he has does have a few better scores behind him to kind of have a price rise. I think it'll kind of cost you a little bit, maybe twenty ish k. Because I know Sam Hughes is going to drop a bit of cash this week, but I mean, at this point, is that we kind of got to get some. You've got to get some sort of cash gen um, in these um, plotting front rollers. So I guess if you have a spare trade. Go for it. I don't think it's a, too much to worry about. The worst part is you're not making money, and it's also an AE nightmare as well. It's pretty bad. Um, yeah, uh, just on the other side of the park, before we move on to the next game, uh, the Rabbitohs didn't look good again. So um, I think this is probably one of the last weeks where I'm like, okay, investing heavily in the Rabbitohs and putting faith in them to come back. I think we've got to see it before we do that again. Agreed. Uh, Broncos versus Cowboys. As someone who owns a lot of Cowboys, when I saw this game turn on and it was absolutely bucketing down, it broke my soul. Um, the Broncos come out, played a pretty good game. It, the weather suited them so much uh, for the Cowboys. Their style of play is like dry weather and all that sort of stuff. Um Adam Reynolds, top scored 83. Probably wouldn't have even considered that with a Cleary um, being out. But Pat Carrigan, top scored 74. No try assists or anything. So uh, maybe he's probably someone better to go than a Cameron, Cameron Murray. He's a bit more... You can kind of put him in the same bracket as an Isaiah Yo, I think. Just, yeah. just heaps of base stats in the second row. Yep. Uh, and with Payne Haas out, his output's going to be a lot more. Scotty Drinkwater actually didn't have the best NRL game, but still scored 77 points. Uh, are you considering him at all? I kind of have other problems or other fires to put out rather than, I guess, throw in um, 
a, a few fullback roulettes. I'm kind of happy with the one I got. I guess Turbo's a bit how you going against Penrith this week, but I know drink water against the um, the Titans next week's going to be quite juicy. So I guess if you're not a drink water owner, you're going to be scared. And if you are a drink water, you're going to be licking your lips and probably a VC or C option there for sure. But I don't think for me, but I can see why a lot of people are considering it because their Titans will dog terrible. Oh, dog yes. Shit. Are you a Val Holmes owner? Uh, I am. Oh, um, oh, and nice. somehow we end up with 59. So that I, I take that in a team that got dominated, um, had – couple of errors as well like i'm pretty sure i've we both have robston um do you have cotter i've cotter as well so i have quite a few cowboys so i was kind of the same but i mean we take 50 with those ones for sure he actually lost 10 points in negative so uh could have had 69 points just on a day without errors but with with the rain and all that sort of stuff i guess that's expected but a day game against the titans next sunday at home so i think someone like val holmes I'm licking my lips, owning him right now. And then he plays an understrength Parramatta the week after. Bryce Cartwright potentially still out. Uh, Mitch Moses out for a while. So I think uh, if you don't have Val Holmes, he's only 12% owned, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, because we, we both did start with him. And he, I think he started at like 9-ish percent. So he hasn't gone off like up too much, I think, because he kind of he killed it. So he kind of went up over 800K. So a lot of people just couldn't afford him. So, yeah, he's one I'm happy. Labert was being ordinary the last couple of yeah. games, but he too has a juicy matchup um, next week. So, wouldn't be one that I'm bringing in. But uh, if you do have him, I'd say hold um, and, and hope for another big game. I'm happy to write this game off from all the Cowboys underperforming. Um, I, I think they look like a good side, and it was just the, the weather didn't suit them. They, they play expensive footy, so I, I'm quite happy to not write them off. Uh, someone like Finny Fuiaki, 31 points. Do you own him? Uh, no, uh, but I guess kind of a rain game, edge forwards aren't really used as much, um, and the game was kind of just not really in his favour in terms of attacking stats, so... I think you just take it. I mean, you didn't. People who have him didn't fork over a lot to to do it. So I think stick with him. He looks an absolute player. So I expect some attacking stats over the next couple of games. Yeah, he's in six percent of sides. Obviously, plays plays the Titans next week. Um, one thing that was a bit of a worry. I'm just checking his minutes. I'm pretty sure he only played like. Uh, you know, he pl- yeah, he played sixty seven minutes, which isn't the that, worst that's for what three hundred. That's so, yeah, I, I think it's fine. That's good enough. You, you just want to see some attacking stats from him. 6% center owned, 31 points, so should go up 30K, 350K. So probably still is a potential purchase next week if you find yourself wanting someone in that position. Like a Smithies to Finifuaki, you probably can't bank that much, but um, it's not the worst trade in the world. Uh, the Broncos, I got a Corey Jensen in my side and expecting a massive uptick in minutes because of Payne Haas leaving, uh, not being there. 41 points, didn't play the minutes I expected him to, so it's a bit awkward. I don't want to spend another trade in my front row spot, but a um, bit disappointing there. Uh, not much else doing here, to be honest. Uh, it was just a rain-affected game, so not much I can really take from this game. Yeah, no, I mean... Uh, what is it? Cobo was a popular option, but he was poor. Again, rain affected. Once the draw comes good, I think he's definitely one to look at. Manly versus the Dragons. 5.30 game on the Saturday. Olaquatu top scored with a try and a line break. 4.94. What a trade-in. Uh, is he someone that you can see yourself getting in very shortly? Uh, I think last week was definitely the week to do it, or, or this week just gone. I don't see him getting too many attacking stats against Penrith, but um, in terms of the premium, uh, the, the Premo second row options, he's definitely up there. They give him so much ball, um, and he's so integral to their attack. So I can definitely see him being an end-of-season player. It's just where that kind of fits in with, with the rest of super coaches to, to bring him in at some point. A lot of the ball is going elsewhere besides Tommy Turbo, isn't it? 55 points for Turbo. That try assist in the first two minutes, I thought he was on. Like, I thought this was the week he was going to absolutely blitz it. He had that try assist, but after that, he made three or four errors in a row, and he pretty much 
every one of them errors was an opportunity though. So it, it kind of sucks because I think the first four rounds, it's been that game where just one or two things go right for him and it's a massive score. It quite hasn't transferred that way and he's got a pretty tough draw coming up in the next two weeks. So it's very disappointing, but I think the big score is going to come for him. Yeah, and it'll probably come against Penrith. Like, they'll probably get beat, you know, 30 to 16 or whatever. He'll probably score all three tries and turn yeah. up. So he's just that sort of player. We kind of mentioned earlier on that Beanley do look a little bit different in terms of how they're playing. They're kind of going one way and using Turbo as like a, even like a decoy option. Not so much he's running the bottom line, but just – He's an option there, but they're using a different one. Uh, I think that has a lot to do with Brooks. But I think the fact that he's still kind of looking to get involved is not really much of a concern. Um, it, like you said, it will come. The big score will come. Um, where am I? Trebojevic. Yeah, so Brooks is getting in the way. 27 points for Brooks. I mean, bad week. Because uh, he was pretty highly traded in this week for someone like Cleary. 14,000 people traded him in this week. <laughs> wow. Should have just, just copped the uh, cop Cleary score, really. Yeah. Could've probably could have worked out a bit better. And then next week, they have Penrith. So I, that's a bad trade in. That's a really bad trade in. Uh, ben Trebojevic with 36 points. He was looking good in the first half, but only played 50 minutes. He's not a play anymore, is he? Oh, he's not a play, and he's almost a trade out. He looks like he might have hit his uh, hit his peak. And I mean, if you don't really have other centre wings to sack, he could be one to go to um, to Blaze Talangi. So I reckon he might be one of the most traded out this week. I think he will be too. There are two premium centre wing options in this game: Ruben Garrick with seventy one points, twenty eight points in tackles for a centre. So it's good to see his base is getting up because of the tackles in the centre spot. But uh, Zach Lomax, 51 points. Uh, he, he did nothing and still scored 51 points. So these these two are premium options. And with the Newcastle and the Tigers in the next two weeks, Tigers have actually performed in the last two weeks. So I'm not going to write them off as a easy matchup, but both these options are really good. And if you can put one of these guys in your side, uh, your center wing's looking pretty strong. Yeah, definitely Garrick. I, I think there's... Lomax is a, a bit of noise about, you know, he's got to have a, a chat with the club uh, this week after round four. So about his future. So there's there's every chance he could be at a new club um, come this week. So I guess one to watch. We should know a bit more during the week. So, But definitely Garrick, uh, you can't really go wrong. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, he's going to the centre. He's going to be a bit down, but he's just making up in tackles and still getting attacking stats and goals. So he's been... The- He's been very good. Um, with with Lomax, I don't think he's going to leave clubs, to be honest. Uh, we've seen what happened with Ben Hunt and Shane Flanagan. Shane Flanagan's a hard ass. He's um, not going to let it happen. Uh, Tommy Talao was a potential cheapy option, but only scored 15 points. So uh, 287K, probably going to lose money next week, which is uh, not good. Uh, if I told you that, Tyrell Sloan was averaging 70 points and scored another 75 with a double in the first four rounds. Would you believe me? No, I wouldn't believe you that he's... I'm pretty sure he's the leading try scorer as well in the combo. I wouldn't believe that. Um, but issue with Sloan, he's not available at centre wing now. So I, I think the fact that he's fullback only kind of just puts a line through him um, as any super coach option. Last option before we move on. Tom Eisenhuth has absolutely killed it. 74 points. Uh, first three games, 59, 40, 48. Uh, he's made 40K. He's going to make another like 50K and be 440K with a low break even again. So if you jumped on him, that, that would have been a nice option to have and plug and play, especially with Burbo doing so poorly. Like if you went him over Burbo, be a nice option. Or, or even him over Salmon, it would have, he would have been the, the, the best option of the lot. Uh, sure. he, he did all, he, he got, what, 70-something in like 46 minutes. He was just a high work rate sort of player. We didn't really see that at Melbourne, but we're seeing it now. And everyone who has him, a bit jealous of you because he's, uh, of all the cheap options that we that everyone kind of picked up at the start, he was one that no one picked up and he's going quite well. He's kind of like a Tohu Harris type that he's just always so bandaged up that he looks... Looks like he's not going to hold it together for so long. But he's like a 
way less mobile version of Tohu Harris without the ball playing. Uh, the Dragons versus Dolphins look. Oh, sorry, the Titans versus the Dolphins look like the Titans actually showed up for the first twenty minutes. Uh, the Hammer massively traded in this week. Got his second ton in his seventy three game career. Break in the one. El- more people traded in Luke Brooks than traded in the Hammer this week. 11,000 people traded in the Hammer. He's 19% owned before that. 112 points. Um, good trade-in for this week, but I think long-term, personally, I'm okay not having him. Yeah, for, I mean, this for, week... For now. A lot of people went him um, this week, and the ones that didn't will go, look, it'd be nice to get him in, but I think there's there's better options at centre wing. Um then, but I mean, he's going to make hundred, which just under hundred k this week. So it would have been nice, but yeah, I don't know. It was the Titans. I don't think he's going to be do, getting tons every single week. What is it? Two in seventy three games. So yep. it's not like very often. Uh, I've got, I've got to say, like seventy three games. <clears throat> sometimes players evolve, um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see another ton from the Hammer this year because he's just involved in all their attack. Um, Trices are coming, and um, yeah, he, he, he's picked up a bit of a like bit of a pass as well. Mm. So that's something we haven't kind of seen from him. Jack Bostock should have been the most traded in player this week with a break even of negative twenty four. He's going to go up eighty k, and so he's going to be near four hundred k with another low break even. Um, Burbo to Bostock could be an option, um, but with him, he scored three tries in two weeks and had. A couple of tries this as well, so maybe that dries up. Yeah, I mean they, they scored quite a few points. The the Dolphins, so that, I think I'm pretty sure they're leading the comp. Actually, the Dolphins somehow they're um, leading the comp. I th- I think so. Ladder. Yep. If you look at their comp, the, the Dolphins are leading the comp. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Um. So I mean, you can't really. Can't really hate on him. Uh, yeah, Bostock, he was kind of one that you ever started with or got him, I guess, last week before his price skyrocketed. Now that it's kind of going up 80K, it'll go up a little bit, but I think it'll come back down. Uh, it's not the busiest of players, but while they're scoring points, he's going to be uh, more part. I think Sarko is another one. We kind of mentioned mm. the guns as well. He didn't score a try, but still scored a ton. Mm. And he had one try. So, um, and he doesn't, lose, points, he doesn't so, lose money at his near 800K price range. Yeah, I guess that the 800k is a bit where you can go what 150k less and get say Joey Manu, um, 100k less get a Zach Low Max. So that's probably why they're more preferred. But yeah, uh, Bostock, I'm happy I have him. I'm not happy I didn't play him. Oh this no, week. I no. Thought I was, I thought I was, I thought I had him play. I thought I was going to play him over Burbo, but for some reason I looked at my team when Manly were playing and Burbo was in my team. I was oh like, no. <laughs> Uh, the Dolphins look like they got heaps of options. Tom Flegler, 80 points with a try assist. Uh, go up 50K, so it would be 525K. I uh, really considered the idea of trading him in for someone like Jensen for me. Uh, but I don't know. I feel like the boat has sailed. The value has gone with him. But it looks like he's just gone to another level at the Dolphins this year. Yeah, all, all the front rowers for the Dolphins, even like the cheaper options, they they're scoring well. I uh, think you could throw Josh Curry in Josh there; Curry, he was yeah. one that he's been scoring well. Um, even Jesse Bromwich, he had a try assist and scored a seventy something. It's like the Jesse Bromwich of old, where everyone oh my had him. God. Uh, but well, I think Flegler definitely the, the pick. Um, not sure what his minutes were. That, that's kind of the, the watch because he's not going to be getting try assists every week. Um, so how many minutes did he play? Who? Flag. He got 50 minutes, so it's not... It's, what? For a front row, that's all right. You expect 50 to 55 points every week. So At the start bad. of the season, when me and Timmy did the front row forward podcast, he, I think he averaged seven to nine more points every time he played 50 minutes or more. Um, so, the yeah, the value's there for him for sure. <laughs> Uh, he's played 53 and 50 in the first two weeks, so 50 minutes is pretty good for a front rower. Yeah. Uh, Marshall King repays owners early. I assume a lot of people would have sold him. He was a massive popular option early in the season, but he's only in 5% of teams at the moment. Uh, he's got a 62, so he looked way better than a 62. Uh, for Fida, he's back with a 57. J- 
Jaden Campbell, 48 points. He looked pretty good too. So if the Titans bounce back, both of them are definitely options. Bo Fermor, 39 points. What to do with him? Yeah, it looks like a trade-out. Um, when Fefeta came on, Firma went over to the right side as well. So that kind of means he's not really as favourable. Um, I, depending on what other options I have, he, he's definitely one that I might see punting because 40 points in the Dolph- and the Dolphins, the Titans look terrible. So he's one that I think I might sack. Yeah, he actually lost money this week too. So as a mid-range option, that's not what you want to see. Um Next game, Knights first, the Warriors. Uh, we can talk about Caelan Ponga first. 117 points. He looked good. He looks like he didn't quite look like it was a complete performance, but he just had all these little attacking stats that made up, like a couple of line break assists, a couple of line breaks off the kicks. So, um, yeah, he's looking like an option coming back that is, yeah, he looks good. Yeah, I- you kind of did say it there. You kind of was in and out of the game. He didn't kind of really cement control in the game and go, yeah, it was kind of a bit of, you you know, came in a line and put a bit of flair on and kind of create something. It wasn't like he was dominating the game. Um, but, yeah, 117 points um, in a game where they only scored 12 points is, is quite good for Kalen Ponga. So some juicy juicier matchups coming up for Ponga. So, um yeah, definitely one to, to keep an eye on if you're doing the old fullback roulette. Yeah, well, he's one I'm heavily considering. He is playing at McDonald Jones Stadium next week against St. George, who have come off a win. So um, I like getting these high upside players against badder sides who are coming off wins because I think they kind of ease the brakes the next week. Uh, but then he has Roosters, Bulldogs, Dolphins. So pretty good draw over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, He's lost 70K as well. We'll make 10K this week. So looking like a very juicy option at about 835K. Um, An unexpected pod to start the year. Jackson Ford, uh, he started the season pretty hot. So 57, 66, 69. But he, he scored against Melbourne a couple of weeks ago. And then he turned up 104 on the weekend. He's looking better. Yeah, I mean, I had him pretty much the whole of last year, and he was he was solid for me. But he even looks better this year. He does. Um, they're kind of using him. Well, he's getting more involved, so they're using him a lot more um, in a, in attack. So, like more attacking stats are going to come. Um, I yeah, I mean, he's an. Who would have thought that we talking about Jackson Ford as a you know potential bring in or in, in your second row to kind of because I think he's. I mean, he'll probably go up over six hundred k now, but. If he keeps playing like that, the Warriors have a pretty, you know, soft draw as well uh, over yeah. the next month or so. So enticing. Yeah, over the next couple of weeks, they got a really good draw. And um, Jackson Ford, the, the thing that puts a lot of confidence in me with him is the fact he stayed on the left side and uh, Cape Well is coming to the side and he's naturally a left side back rower and they've put Capo on the right to accommodate for Jackson Ford. So I think that just says that he's uh, the coach has confidence in Jackson Ford. We know that, but uh, it's always a good sign when they kind of pip uh, things like this happen. Uh, Sean Johnson, 75 points. I traded him in for Nathan Cleary. I'm very happy with it. He got the goal kicking back and, um, looks good. Uh, Luke Metcalf did golf injured though, so I don't know if Luke Metcalf was going to kick anyway, but it looks like Luke Metcalf will be out for a couple of weeks, which means Chanel Harris Tavita will probably go into that number six role. Um, he scored, I'm trying to look for him, I can't find him for some reason. 49 Harris Tavita got 49. I thought he scored way more than that. He didn't score that second try, that's why. Um, but he's 238k. Available at halfback only, but the round six updates will come in about the time he's due to make um, Should be available for extra like. cash. He's already played two games, though, so um, his price change won't happen until... Oh, it'll happen now, uh, but the dual position won't be added until round six. So um, hopefully we get that. But but I guess with, with Harris Savita, his first two games were like a nine and an 11, so they're... He's break even is what? Um, 53. Yeah, 53. So he actually lost money this week. <laughs> he loses so. money. 
not, it's, 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 it's all right, I think. But maybe by the time that he's due to have price rise, um, Luke Metcalf will be due back in like two weeks after that. So, But I heard it was a broken leg. Uh, yeah, it looked bad. Um, well, I mean, it, it looked weird. Like, it didn't yeah, look like it, anything happened, but he could not walk at all. So it, it did look weird. It just looked like a pure legs tackle. He was just chopped in the legs. It was pretty good. Um, where else? I had someone I was pinpointing next. Kai Pierce Paul, 65 points. He sh- went way under the radar this week. Actually, 12,000 people traded him in. He's in 6% of teams, so he doesn't go above 15%. Uh, but with a break even of three, 65 points, we'll see 50K price rise. So go up to 440, 450. S- still a pretty good tra- trading option. Yeah, I I was one of those 12,000 that brought him in. Um, I know the rest, of, the rest of you guys kind of had him a couple of weeks before that. So you got that first price rise, but he looks the goods, man. Um, getting 60 plus points without attacking stats. Uh, and they will come because he's such a tall, lanky guy offloading um, with Ponga sneaking around. I think, yeah, attacking stats will come. He definitely looks the goods. 37. Sure. And I think even at 40, what, 450-ish K, I still think he's a great option to bring in. 37 points in tackles and 20 points in hit up. So, when I look at them stats and they're above 50, that that's always a good sign. So a um, couple of points in offloads, a couple of points in tackle bus. So 65 two weeks in a row without any major attacking stats, it's very good. And I think if you don't have him in your side, he he's definitely an option that can be not such a um, – you don't have to break the bank and you, you're getting a premium second rower. Um, the Sharkies, how would you see this game? Uh, Nico Hines is back. Uh, he is back, uh, but the first, what, 30 minutes, I was hating the Sharks. Um, we were down 18-0. We looked terrible. I was cursing. And then I don't know what changed. The Rays just switched off, and it, Nico Hines came into the game. The rest of the Sharks played well. Even my mate, Tricky Trindle, had a half-decent game. Uh, scored a <laughs> and set one up. Fucking Trindle. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Nico Hines, 94. Um, he was kind of one, I think he was the second most captained um, but behind Turbo. So the ones that take captain him, a tick to them. Uh, we, we kind of are always saying the scores will come. He's too good to, to not, you know, to not um, score well. Um, and yep, yeah, finally did. It looks very good. Um, Just ordinary that he has a buy this week. So you can't really. Yeah, make- you. You don't really capitalize on it, do you? Uh, 94, break even in 121, so it actually goes down to about 850K, which is not too bad. Uh, holding him for the buy is a bit awkward, but then he's only in 28% of teams, so it's definitely a pod for Nico Hines. Uh, Kale Iro comes in, center wing, 219K. Timmy actually played him, so good... Uh, yeah, good stuff good for him. He was very excited because uh, he needed he needed something like that on his Sunday. Uh, he had Kalen Ponga and Kale Iro, um, so that kind of helped him claw his way back to a respectable score for the week. But ninety seven points as a Sharks fan, how do you see this playing out? Because uh, Talakai has actually been one of your best players in the first few weeks. It's 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 awkward. Um, Talakai moved to the back row and they kind of. He got subbed off, but he was quite ordinary in the back row. Um, he just looked lost out there. So I don't know what they're going to do in two weeks' time. Will he go back to the centres or has Erod done enough to, you know, earn his spot? I'm a, I, he, was, he was quite good. The try he did score, they didn't check. It, it looked He pretty much dropped the ball up, uh, on the try line. Um, but I will try as a try. Um, but... Yeah, it's a one to watch. It, it would be nice, I guess, for all super coaches that if Eero does play, um, get named in two weeks because it means we're going to have another cheapie to bring in. Yeah, I, I kind of hope it doesn't happen too soon because we've got a few cheapies coming up at the moment. So hopefully mm. we can wait just a bit longer for someone like Iro. But he's someone who, if he gets named, you can probably get him in early because he's good enough to good enough to play. But he actually he does have the buy, so if he gets named the week after. It probably does. Line. You can then wait another yeah, week. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so he does look good. Looks kind of like Valentine Holmes a little bit, like a, another Valentine Holmes. 
McInnes, 86 points, 48 points in tackles. What a machine. Mulatalo, double with 78. Uh, repaid the owners that bought him a couple of weeks ago. Schiller, 77 with a double. Sione Katoa, 75 points. You're an owner? Yeah, I'm an owner, and he hasn't really gone below, say, 45. He's kind of just been okay without without a big score. So I take it he's got to try right at the end. So we take those. And that was with a Nico Hines try assist, uh, 35 points. So should make about 20K. So he's done a pretty good job for you early on. He's he's made money, hasn't lost money, and he's had respectable score. So good, nice starting with him. Uh, Braden Trindle, 66 points. Try, a try assist, a try contribution, and a line break. So he has to do a lot to get 66 points. Gone. 5 8. 5 8, maybe an option, but uh, I think with the likes of. Yeah, I, I couldn't start. With yeah, him. not 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 when the, the first couple of games he was banging out like 10 points. Yeah. It's... But the story of this game is all. Danny Levi sellers to Joey Lasik are probably hating themselves because Danny Levi has come out and looked like bloody Cameron Smith with 68 points with a line break try. His cash generation is going to re re happen. Uh, should <laughs> re happen. I didn't know what word to use then. Uh, should go up about 30, 40 K. So we'll be three sixteen with a very low break even once again. So that cash generation just keeps on going and, Hopefully, he can be high enough for us to go to Harry Grant. Well, I don't think he's going to be that high. Um, <laughs> I mean, if he keeps scoring tries, he's what, scored three tries in four games. So, as long as he keeps scoring tries, he's going to be sweet. Um, but, yeah, he, he even came back on um, the last, I think, 10 minutes. So, he might even be earning more game time um, to Ricky as he's kind of proving one of their more dangerous players. I'll, for a long time, I've hated... Uh, I hate's a strong word, but I haven't liked the look of Danny Levi as a hooker. I think he he's kind of like. Do you remember Sione Katoa for the Panthers and yeah. um, the Bulldogs? I thought he always made the. Actually, no, he's a more relatable person, Sonny Luke. He always made the options that m- would make him look like a hero, and I think mm. he's kind of pulled that back a bit. He's still got that attacking kind of kind of soup coach. Uh, attacking NRL game. Uh, he's running hooker for sure, but I think just off that forward pack, he just looks way better than he has in the past. Yeah. I mean, Tarpanay was absolutely beast mode um, in this game, especially early on. So yeah, Levi, uh, I think the word you're looking for is over, like overplaying their hand. That's it. Um, That's rather the than word. just getting the ball to the halves, like what say Sony Luke does with, with, with Cleary. Um, yeah, I think he's, yeah, now that he's got a bit, got a bit older, Danny Levi is definitely taking the better option more often. Yeah, that's for sure. Morgan Smithies, 43 points, will only go up about 15K, so we'll just hit that 400K maybe. But he's not playing the minutes. Uh, Corey Horsburgh's back. He, I mean, these last two games, especially early on, them base stats should have been there for him this game. So I, I hate to see what it looks like when the grindy games aren't there. Yeah, I mean, play 56, still got, uh, what do you get, 43. 43. I mean, he's not a he's not a rush trade. He's one that we will have to get rid of because we're not going to be happy with 40 points every week. So he's one that is going to be leaving a lot, of, a lot of teams in the next couple of weeks. But I think there's probably other second rowers um, that, that are probably more of a rush rush trade than, say, Smithies. Thing is, he can hold his price at least now. Yeah, for he's a, not for a little drop. bit. So definitely isn't a priority trade out. Uh, won't be an A nightmare, but yeah, it's, it's a bit awkward. Uh, moving on to the – actually, one last thing. Will Kennedy, he's been awful super coach wise 27 points with a try assist. Um, he, he was someone I was massive on in the preseason just because – in the last three years, he's averaged really good in the first three or four rounds. And I know Random Stats guy um, actually started with him and I couldn't be more disappointed because he was someone who had a pretty good draw early on. He's gone on to score 23, 58, 20, and 27 with a try assist. Is he going to be an option at any point of the season? Like, e- even the buy period, I'm just not liking the look of how the Sharks are playing and how the Sharks are using him. I think with Trindle kind of trying to have his hands on the ball a lot more. He's kind of 
Will Kennedy isn't part of it. Yeah, I think yeah, you've you've definitely nailed it there. And even super coach wise, NRL wise, he's looked pretty ordinary. Like mm. he was throwing bad passes, dropping balls. So until you see a, a better Will Kennedy, uh, he's not going to be an option, um, even during the buys. Last game, uh, it was a thriller, 17-16 to the Tigers. I tipped the Tigers, so I'm very happy. Uh, the Tigers got up 17-16. to Clint Gutson does what he does again without um, Mitch Moses there. He just he averages like 92 or something, 107 points. I mean, he, he's, he's actually such a good option, but can you, can you even consider it just with all these hot options and this hot field of fullbacks? I think he can. Um, think the fact can? that he's touching the ball pretty much four times a set, um, now goal kicking, definitely one. I mean, goal kicking fullback and what he scored, 107 um, before updates in a game. So definitely one to look at. Interesting option here. Justin Olam, 420K. Uh, he's looked pretty good uh, NRL-wise. Uh, 84 points and... In his first game and seventy four points on the uh, today, thirty four points in tries, ten points in line breaks, ten points in tackles, four points in tackle bus, twenty one points in runs. So about thirty five ish to forty in like base and base attack, but has a massively low break even and should make a shitload of money. 423k. Uh, their draw over the next couple of weeks is the. They've got the Dolphins and the Dragons in the next two weeks. Hey, why are you laughing at the Dolphins? They're leading the comp. We've already gone. <laughs> yeah, but come on. The Dolphins do leak points here and there. Yeah, I mean, it's fair. I mean, he does have a lot of errors in him, Olam. Um, a lot of missed tackles as well. So it kind of drags his base down to probably more of a 30 um, than a 40. Yep. Um, he's going to rely on tries, which I guess you can say the same thing for pretty much all center wings around that price. So, I mean, it's not the worst. If you do want, I guess, a, a Tiger center wing, Fatape definitely doesn't look it. I know he looks cheap, but I don't know what he scored, but it wasn't very – he's got a 10. Ten. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Junior Tupo was quite good as well. I don't know what he's priced at. Um, he didn't score the greatest, but yeah, – He's priced at 400K. I actually looked at him in the pre- preseason. 446. I mean, he – he didn't have a try and scored 47. Did have a line break where he, he went through the line and then had a cramp. So that was a pretty <laughs> bad time to get a cramp. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I, don't, I don't mind it. I don't think I'd be going there. The Tigers did destroy Cronulla, but they were pretty ordinary today because I thought Parra were ordinary as well. So, I mean, he's going to be outside Galvin, so not the worst. Pretty ordinary game. Galvin, 62 points, two tries here. I played him pretty much. And a Simbin. (laughs) And a Simbin. So it could have been a lot more than that. Uh, 10 points in line breaks. Might get suspended uh, because of that Simbin. Mm. So that's a massive watch. What what are you doing there if if he is suspended? Because break even at minus 62, 62 points. So should make, he makes 100K. He makes over 100K. So he goes up above 300. We'll have a massive negative break even because of his last two weeks. So you probably got to hold on to him. Unless he gets like, if he gets six weeks, it's really awkward. He's not getting six. It'll be, I think, one to two. It's his first, you know, offense. Yeah. Um, one or two. I mean, it kind of looked worse than kind of what it is. Um, he's there. I don't think he's going to be playing next week or, or the week after, but yeah. he's definitely a hold. That, that's really disappointing because he would have been a nice little player over the next two weeks. Stefano Utukamanu, uh, 37 points in tackles, 19 points in runs, and 10 points in. Uh, tackle bus and two points in offloads. Looks like he he looks way better this year. 494k, break even of 32, so he makes a little bit of money. 44 and 67 in his last two weeks. He played 54 and 61 minutes in the last two weeks. Um, I'll have to get up his stats for today. Uh, he played 53 today, um, and I think Pole was he Pole was 60 minutes, um, but he didn't score very well. 43 points, but. Stefano just looks way better than he has in the last. Yeah, absolutely. He's kind of the... I remember his first year he had and he finished the year very well. Then a lot of people started with him the next year and he just kind of didn't really go to the next step. But this season, he's really gone to the next step. Um, heaps of runs, um, tackle bus as well. He does look 
does look pretty good. I think it was you who I remember we were doing the wrap up show. I think you were and Mikey were kind of both talking about him and Pole. Um, I think you were writing in the comments uh, about how, how good these guys were going in terms of picking the front rower who kind of all plod along. Well, yeah, even Pole with 43 points based at 420k, like and the minutes are there. That, that's what you kind of got to look at. He's playing 60 minutes every week. Exactly. Pole, so, obviously. exactly. I kind of like Utukamanu as an option a lot better than Pole at the moment. Just the way Utukamanu is looking, like he's tackle busting every first tackle. Like he's just bumping off blokes for fun. Uh, he looks really good. Uh, Sione Fainu comes off the bench, plays big minutes, 53 points. That would have been a nice trade in. 3,000 people traded him in. I, I just think because he is only second row, only which is why a lot of people didn't go him. And I think with the try in the first week, 33 points last week, it, it was a bit awkward, but he he looks the goods. Yeah, he does look quite a play. He played, what was it, 40 minutes. So, I mean, it, he's probably going to be about 320-ish K um, after the price rises. So, I guess this was the week to get him um, mm. next week. Maybe if you need a downgrade option, it's not the worst. The fact he's only playing forty. Although if an injury pops up in the second row, he's his first man in there, so could be an all right one. Um, definitely looks a player has a good PPM as well. That's it. Uh, Dylan Brown, forty six points, very disappointing. What do we do with him? Is he like? Are, are we starting to worry? I mean, it was 46 points without any attacking stats. So that's what we kind of expect from him. Um, Gutho kind of got all the attacking stats in this game. He did take the line on a lot, which is kind of what you want. Just didn't come for him. I think there's not really any other 5'8s that are kind of setting the world on fire, apart from Galvin, who's now going to be missing. Um, I know we'll have Munster potentially back next week uh, for the Storm. There's rumours that he's potentially going to be named, but I still wouldn't really be worrying about it. I think Dylan Brown will, will come good. He's just the type of guy that you can put him in there and not worry about him. Uh, I thought he would have done a lot better, to be honest, uh, to start this year. But um, I think his big scores will come. He's, he's not much to worry about. Blaze Talungi, 42 points, uh, 204,000, came off a 67 last week. And a lot of people jumped early, 8,400 traded in. He looks good. And at 5'8", he looked pretty involved. Every time he had the ball, I was like, yes, Dylan Brown's got... An attacking stat, because uh, he got like a line break and nearly a try assist early on. Uh, well, says, yeah, they look exact same player. It's, they it's, look you exactly the same. Out, Dylan Brown's wearing sip. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kept getting it mixed up, but um, yeah, he looks good. Look, looks like he'll get involved and 42 points considering the score line and, and how much ball Gutho had. Yeah. Pretty. Uh, he's, yeah, he's definitely going to be a tick for, for um, a cheapie next week. Just it's going to be whoever you're downgrading from. Really, it's going to be a. Pretty much a must-have for uh, downgrade Chibi. Joey Lusick makes about 30K, goes to 420K, so that's 100K in total, probably a bit less than a lot of people would have liked. That's two 30s in a row. Would you be selling? I don't know who you'd be selling to. You kind of need to make a bit of money to go up to anyone. Um, Braley's only getting 20 minutes. I don't know if you'd be going back down to Levi for the ones that, that did that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Hans was on the bench this week, and I think he got like 15 minutes, um, which is not ideal for, I guess, Lussick. But he's definitely not a play. Um, and if he is your first hooker, I'd be looking at kind of moving him on or upgrading him because you don't want to be getting 30s every week. That's it. All right, we got much else? No, I'm I'm happy. I am happy with uh, with the rundown. I know it was a late one um, in terms of Sunday instead of Monday, but yep. good four-day weekend, and I guess everyone's back to work the next day. Uh, just one quick last thing. Sean Lane, 60 points. Are you an owner? I'm not an owner, no, but um, it's an awkward one. He's kind of scoring half decent enough that you don't really want to get rid of him. Early on, he was a bit poo, mm. but he's been all right, I think. Um, the two back rowers, IPAP and, and Bateman, were, were kind of watches for me as well, but they only got 50 points as mm. well. So, no. Tigers are looking good. Um, are we, like, when we look at draws now, are the, is the Tigers the easy matchup that a lot of people were kind of saying a couple of weeks ago? I don't think they're as easy as, say, the, the Titans and 
maybe even the Dragons on a, on a bad day. Mm -hmm. But we got to see consistency from the Tigers. Like, they kind of done this in the last couple of seasons. They put, you know, two, three good games together, and then next week they put absolute stinker on. Um, so they look a lot better. Um, Uppy's running the show. So hopefully the Tigers fans, they're not going to get three wooden spoons in a row. It'd be funny if they did, though. <laughs> All right, cheers for tuning in, guys, uh, to the Monday wrap-up. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. We're doing the podcast. We're back tomorrow for the podcast. Ooh. Uh, so we'll, we'll get Timmy's thoughts. It'll be you, you and Timmy, yep. Me and Timmy. Um, we'll, we'll get Timmy's thoughts and get some bold predictions out of him. <laughs> All right. Oh, again, I'll wait. Uh, cheers for coming on, Jake, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Sam. See you later.